There are so many games here that I haven't touched yet. But right now I feel like playing all of these. I don't know why. Long ago, old Yarnum was overrun by the plague of beasts and left to rot and decay. It can't be any worse than in here. Can it? There was no hope, there was no time, there was no room, okay? There was, we'd already turned on each other by the time the hordes arrived. I'll just go and get some fresh air and be eaten by a monster. This doesn't feel right. How about I play more Animal Crossing instead? I feel sad now. Oh, what's this? Oh, look what I just got here. I got a springy ride on. You know what? I don't want to play video games anymore. I'm going to go outside. Kids, see you later. Where are you going? I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. Huh? <gasps> oh, right. I forgot. The world's turned into bricks. <sighs> Well, I guess we're all stuck inside right now. So for all of the children out there that don't have any school... On February 14th, 2005, at 9.13pm, the internet domain name www.youtube.compliance was created, and history was changed forever. Not just for internet culture, but for the world. It wasn't until April 23rd, 2005, at 8.27pm, when the first ever YouTube video was uploaded to the site, entitled Me at the Zoo. But when it did go public, the universe universe practically imploded. Alright, so here we are, in front of the uh, elephants. And the cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts. And that's, that's cool. It was an 18 second joke about a prick. Ooh. Nowadays we look at this as just a terrible test video made by one of YouTube's co-founders, but back in 2005 it was revolutionary for multiple reasons. To begin with, it was the first ever upload to what would become a multi-billion dollar corporation. Secondly, it was about a peony. And thirdly, it definitively proved to the world that YouTube was a website in which anybody, any single person, could make any video they wanted and upload it. Uh Sound quality? Visual quality? Joke quality? <laughs> How come this stuff never happens to Captain Kirk? It didn't matter! No more sending off and waiting for your VHS tapes to show up on home video TV programs to benefit big corporations. This website was called YouTube for a reason. Because it was all about you. I know what talking about! <laughs> And once the world realised this, everybody and their mothers took a shot at standing out for the sake of trying to get their five minutes of fame. And as the idea of an online video celebrity became more and more tangible as the years went on, even to the point of people starting careers off of their video popularity, a trend began of everybody taking a shot at going viral. From children to children, and even children. <laughs> I tried it too. I made some videos. When I was a kid. And you're gonna watch them with me. <laughs> So recently, my channel itself has had a complete overhaul with the way that I make videos, and judging by the view counts I've had so far, it's been going pretty damn well. So thank you all so much for that. Whoa! 540,000?! That's how many teeth I used to have. Before the operation. So instead of capitalising on this, I thought it'd be way funnier to take a look back at all of the videos that started everything. Before I had the subscribers. Before I went to conventions. Before... I had sponsors. Whoa, I'm a guy, hey! And when I'm not remembering what going outside was like, I'm playing AFK Arena, the very kind sponsors of today's video. This here is a beautiful card game with idle RPG mechanics. And if you know anything about my busy lifestyle, idle games that play themselves while I'm working really gets me going. Collect many different awesome hero cards with unique art styles, assemble your lineup, choose your favorites, invest in them and upgrade them. With all of this stuff, you feel like a collector that can actually do stuff with the things that you collect. And lots of people enjoy that feeling, because the game holds a 4.5 rating on the Google Play Store and 4.7 rating on the Apple App Store. That's basically five! Even better, the game itself is one year old by the time this video goes live, and to celebrate this birthday, not only will there be special events and activities to get special rewards, but also, AFK Arena have licensed the character Ukiyo Tachibana from the classic arcade fighter Samurai Showdown by SNK. Don't know what Samurai Showdown is? Oh dear. If you log into the game, you'll be able to try out Ukiyo for free for seven days. And that's not all. If you head to the description to bit.ly forward slash Kadikarus04, you can also use the bonus code HAPPYBDAY0409 to get yourself five birthday chests, ten common hero scrolls, and 500 diamonds. So take advantage of this great limited time deal and feel nice knowing that you'll be supporting my channel while doing it. AFK, SNK, it's... Acronyms! Wait a second, what was I talking about? 
Ah yes, looking at my first videos. No, I'm not talking about my first ever game review. And I am Cadicorus. As beautiful as that is, because I already talked about that in another video years ago. I'm instead talking about the comedy and music videos I made even before that, which I very naively assumed would immediately get popular. The videos that I told my parents were worth me spending all my spare time doing because they would obviously do so well that YouTube would definitely be my career within six months. I'm so sorry, Mum! Oh, hi, Mum. <laughs> I mean, can you blame me? If you can get over half a million fans by making a single video talking about an elephant's floppy, this YouTube thing must be easy. I've got this. Look, my camera quality is much better than that man's even. Looking back, I really wish someone had told me otherwise. I needed the guidance. And I'm kind of guilty of tricking my mum and my stepdad into making them think that this was a valuable way to spend my time and that this was definitely gonna be my career. You know, it was okay that I was spending every waking moment of every day making garbage fire videos because they didn't understand the internet, they didn't understand YouTube, but I did. Which is why I made the best damn videos on the website! The dog left his squeaky toys on the floor again. <laughs> okay, they're bad. <laughs> Watching really old videos of yourself whether it's something that you made or on ancient family home videos is exactly like your first kiss. It's surprising, it's awkward, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, and there may even be a bit of blood. But everybody's videos suck when they start out. You don't know editing software tricks top to bottom, your writing blows, you've got no experience, your acting is as convincing as a plastic slide, you've got no confidence in your voice, so it's okay. It's completely normal and understandable to be bad when you're starting out. Still though, that doesn't mean the videos you made all those years ago aren't unbearable, because they are. Everybody's are. And, to be perfectly honest, with this lockdown we're all stuck in right now, I wanted to watch something that reminded me of the good old days. You know, the days where we could freely catch diarrhea and know that no matter what, we could use heaps of toilet roll with reckless abandon. The days where we could go out whenever we wanted and get a pint at the Volan vacuum. The days where we could book a holiday and fly anywhere, even to Barbados. The days where gross people didn't bother to wash their hands that much. And so every time you went to a public bathroom, it was a lottery if you'd end up in the hospital afterwards. It was exciting! The earliest video I have was made back in September 2011 when I uploaded my first intro for the channel to let people know how much I had planned ahead and how serious I was. Oh no, what was that? Was that a record scratch? Are things about to get funny? Nope, it's just a surprise reveal that my name is basically a pun because my last name is Caddick, so I thought that the username Cad Icarus fitted really well with the name of the game franchise Kid Icarus, which I still haven't played yet. I don't want to play as a snotty little kid, even if he is an angle. This is pretty basic run-of-the-mill editing for someone who had just learnt this stuff at school, and this intro lasts for what feels like 30 years. You press the start button, the intro to the NES game slides in, the record scratches, the jigsaw transition scrambles the logo, here's my name, here's some mirrored explosions, there's my voice. Cadicorous. Which back then I had to lower the pitch off by about four semitones because otherwise it would have sounded like Cadicorous. And for the cherry on the cake, I even used copyrighted music for the backing guitar chord accompanying the explosion. For those wondering, it's the first chord of the song Cygnus X1 Book 2 Hemispheres by Rush. The best song title of all time next to Kitchen Table by Stump. <laughs> By the way, yes, back then this was originally uploaded as a single individual video. Because it's just that damn good it deserved it. Yep, I'm happy I got rid of this one very quickly, so onto some actual content. Whoa, wait a second, what's this? A rogue video file from my first ever £50 flip camera in 2011? Please tell me I forgot to delete a video of me popping a spot on my nose or something. How awful could this possibly be? What? Unfortunately though, after this, the first two actual edited videos I made for this channel, both of them being vlogs, have been lost to the sands of time forever. I can't find the files anywhere. That, and I smashed up the laptop those videos were on with a big hammer. In those videos I was 16, but in the videos you'll be seeing today, I was 17. So yeah, I know, I technically wasn't a kid, but trust me, when you get to your 20s, you will look back at yourself and go, God, you're a stupid kid! So anyway, the earliest Cad Icarus edited video I have access to is... this. Don't worry, Mum! YouTube will be a successful business! 
I'll have a million subscribers, you'll see! Barking at another dog, barking at the game. If you couldn't tell, this is a music video about my mum's dog. Why did I do this? I don't know. Oh, actually, I do know. Because I was an imbecile. <laughs> it sounds bad, it looks bad, I can't sing, and this was my idea of a joke back in the day. Hey dog, what you doing on the windowsill? I know what he was doing. I put him there. I cover all the basics with a song about a dog, you know. Dogs bark, dogs eat food, dogs hate baths, dogs fart, smell like grandma, and the video ends at a generous 1 minute and 27 seconds. Except it doesn't. So what could be happening for the remaining 1 minute and 15 seconds? There was something dangerous on the floor. What is that? Like all the great YouTubers out there, branding and facial recognition is very important. Mix that in with a Dog saliva's just been all over my face. Funny personality, and I figured I was set for the rest of time. But of course, I missed out on the fact that the lighting is abysmal, the audio God, I love the blue tap. Sounds like a burst pipe, and I'm just not funny at all. Like, I'm so not funny. And this isn't me saying that I'm hilarious nowadays and I'm so <laughs> random when you get to know me, but I'd like to think that today my writing and presentation is miles better than- To be if I had my face blown off in war or something and I came back with this face transplant, I'd be incredibly happy. I mean, wouldn't you? Unless, of course, it isn't, and this is secretly comedic genius way ahead of its time. And what am I doing with my voice? I don't talk like that. Why do I sound like Igor? Hello there, chaps. You wanna see my doggy treats? <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> humble beginnings, right? And I also tried my hand at an ending catchphrase. If it is your birthday today while watching this video, then happy frickin' birthday. And remember to stay beautiful. Yep, this was the first time I said it, and continued to say that for nearly seven years afterwards. And please remember to stay beautiful. Wanna hear something really weird too? Back then, I actually treated these vlogging segments at the end of the bigger videos as separate videos. Like, I, I edited them and rendered them as separate videos to be uploaded separately as like a part two to the original video. Because I thought that would net me way more views and I would get at least an extra $1,000. But I thought about it for a second and realized I was a nutcase, and so I decided to stitch those two parts of the videos together and upload them as one. Which pleases everybody, doesn't it? You get the sketch, and then you get a bit of me at the end, so everybody can see everything. E everybody's happy. If you don't like one bit, you can skip to the end. If you don't like the end, you can just watch the beginning, it's fine. I figured that was a safer thing to do, you know, just in case the extra $1,000 plan didn't work. After this, I tried out my first ever comedy sketch. Enter my reaction to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's release, a video which is one joke. I find Find out that the game came out, get really angry that nobody told me that it came out, and then react appropriately. This is the only joke, and it goes on for three agonizing minutes. And most of it is totally useless filler anyway. I mean, I start the video playing Zelda 1 for no reason at all, and then I do this cutaway. I'm just playing Legend of Zelda. The Gold Cartridge Edition. Am I bragging about owning a gold cartridge? They aren't that rare, James. Get your head out of your ass and put on some clothes that fit you, for God's sake. There's a few things I like about this video, though, as awful as it is. Firstly, it's the first time we all saw Ollie, who would go on to be my cameraman and partner in crime for other videos in the future. Well, I figured you must have got it. Nice looking at the script there, idiot. <laughs> Secondly, this was the first time I properly started dabbling in action effects, like blood splatters and gun muzzle shots. I even replicated the kill cam from COD right here. And that right there, that was Ollie falling directly onto a concrete step. He went above and beyond for that shot. Let's just hope that nobody tried to break in when they saw my old house number perfectly visible in the frame. Thirdly, this shot here. I like it, it looks really cool. Fourthly, this moment here where I do a first person shooter gag of pressing a controller to swap weapons. I'm surprised how smooth that turned out considering we had three pairs of hands to make that shot work. And finally, this moment here where my sister takes one for the team and properly rolls backwards down a hill, legs in the air and everything. <laughs> Just look at her go! But the rest of it? No. Just no. The barrel of the gun is taped on! And it's wonky! <laughs> It's facing the floor! Oh great, another vlog. And in this one, I was really hungry and you need to feed me. Feed me now. Feed, feed me. Ooh, yeah, I could do with a bit of fresh meat. Feed me all of your knees. Hmm, I could especially knobbly knee. Feed me your knees. If you don't give them to me, I'll get them myself. And how do you feel about the release of Modern Warfare 3? Oh, shut up! And look at your stupid clean-shaven face! You belong on a packet of Pampers! Post a comment or leave a video response. <laughs> hey, I remember video responses. Anybody out there do too? That's old school YouTube, you know. That was when, if you wanted to, you didn't have to just post a comment. You could actually reply to the video with a video of your own. 
This was a complete mess and YouTube rightfully got rid of it. So why don't you just click that button so you can subscribe? Oh god, that was my old subscribe jingle. The painful, agonizing memories. Ah! The next video I tried to do was a parody advert for Monster Energy Drink. And you haven't seen proper acting until you have seen me reacting to the narrator for this advert. Okay, Jim, this is a very simple scene here, nothing too complicated. All we need you to do is look through your bookshelves to pretend to find a game to play, and then all of a sudden, a voice off screen surprises you. Got it? Yes. Okay, great. And action. Hey, kiddo. <gasps> right, okay, I'm having you killed. Well, how about trying Monster Energy? Look at those pixelated artifacts all around the image. I was terrible. Yeah. There isn't really anything I can say about this video. It's a parody ad because that's what everybody was doing back then, including Tabuscus, whose name Rikus is very similar to Kadikarisakusakusakus. <laughs> <laughs> this video is just me talking about why Monster is so great, you know, how cheap it is, and, and using tons and tons of stock life quote images and- Awesome! <laughs> emojis, yeah. Oh, sorry, can we hear that voice one more time? Awesome! The rest of the video, though, is just, well, stuff like this. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, this is how crazy Monster Energy makes you. You throw envelopes into the air and put shopping bags on your head. This is so crazy. You can't even bring yourself to flail your arms more in case you hit yourself and you got a boo-boo. <gasps> Brewed by Poseidon himself to recharge your epicness. And as far as I'm aware, this video was actually where a lot of my first 100 or so subscribers came from. I don't know why, but I'm not complaining. I mean, I got an audience with this video, so I can't be too mad with how badly it's made. This drink is orange! <laughs> I think I said it best myself when somebody tweeted me a clip from this video ages ago, and I said, No one needs to see this era! Oh look, it's Cookie Monster. Why, why is he in the video? Who cares? On to the next one, which is when I tried my hand at making a short film. A parody horror thing called The Cleaning. You get it? It's like The Shining, but instead of one verb where you're shining, it's another verb where you're cleaning. Even though I suppose if one were to clean something, you would indeed make it shine. So this is basically the same as calling the sequel to Babe, Hot Piece of Ass. Oh, nice one, Cads. Leave the script out, why don't you? That's the scariest part of the horror movie. This is a nearly nine minute epic all about the day I discovered my vacuum cleaner could talk and nothing of any value happens whatsoever until two and a half minutes in where we first of all find out I need to excrete that vacuum cleaners can shat and then we hear exactly what this vacuum cleaner sounds like when the dust bag is empty oh don't ever stand on that wire again Although the annoying thing is, there's nothing more I can say about this film. It's just eight minutes of me mostly talking back and forth with a hoover that has a mouth with no backing music or anything, spliced in with about 800 times that I look dead into the camera lens. Actually, you know what? Screw the script. This is the scariest thing in the whole movie. Oh, wait, no, no, I tell a lie. There's also this bit here when we're testing out if the hoover can taste certain objects. And then I put my hand into the hoover and it says, That tastes like my mother. Do you want to hear the worst sound in the universe? E -o, e -o, e well, how about this sound that I use out of absolutely nowhere in this part of the video? I think it's time for a little... payback. Hey, look! Why did I put that there?! God, why, why did any of you, you subscribe? subscribe?! I unplug the hoover, walk downstairs, get some biscuits, check you out because you so fat. <laughs> oh no, the hoover moved downstairs somehow, and then that's the end. To be continued. Never. By the way, if any of you out there tried to make a video about a talking vacuum cleaner, I'll sue you for copyright infringement. On to the next video, where I pitch shift my voice to match the Legend of Zelda theme. And you know what? I didn't screw it up! I mean, you could do without the pointless video effects. Look, we get it, you can use an editing software, good boy. And maybe you should think about getting rid of the intro section. <laughs> But yeah, this really did take me as long as it looked like it did. I am a little bit proud of this one, even though I could do it five times quicker nowadays. And let's be real for a second, that's a face that only a mother could be proud of. <laughs> Other than that though, this video is not one of the worst things I ever did, I think. Down there, in the description. These separate vlogs though, they're definitely the worst. Spread the word of CAD for me, that'd be fantastic. Ooh, pray tell me what exactly is the word of CAD. Oh, don't worry, I know what the word is. Knobhead! This video though, meh, I can't hate this one, it, it's okay. It's that time I tried to channel my inner Mike Oldfield, but instead of being mega talented and performing one of the best instrumentals of the mid-1970s, I'm instead doing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with drumming that sounds like a broken down car. 
But still, uh, I can't hate this one too much. Again, it's not one of the worst things I ever made. Except for, once again, the separate vlog bit, of course. Her candy! Who gave that to you? <laughs> what are you laughing at? What happened that was so funny? Oh, and there's this one bit here where I'm talking absolute balls but can't stop looking over to my right. What is happening over there? Have an amazing Christmas and stay beautiful. You eat, eat as much as you want, but please just stay beautiful. Work off, work, work off. off. And then I made Arnold Schwarzenegger dubstep. I'm sorry. You know what? The weather is really nice today. Can we stop watching these and go outside yet? Indoors is good. Indoors is your friend. Remember to wash your hands, everybody. Oh! Okay, I don't despise this one either. It's okay for an old video of mine. It's more in time than I was expecting as well, but this bit right here... <laughs> That makes me want to fill my lungs with fluid. I'm also getting pretty sick of these goddamning intro and outro videos. They're the worst. Stop it! My favorite part of this vlog in particular, though, is when I start apologizing to all my fans for the lack of a video for the next week because of a bigger project I was working on. Next week, there won't be a new video, but the week after, there will be a new video. Yes, Caddy, you've got to inform a whole audience leaning on your every word. All... 43 of them. And by the way, don't forget to follow me on a badly pixelated transparent tea.com. Up until this point, I had been doing a lot of one-off videos and one-off sketches, but I wanted to have a recurring show at this point. You know, I was a big boy. I was experienced enough for that point. And this new show idea I had set around the same theme. I'll let me from 2011 explain it to you. If you look down there in the description, you'll find a link to my Facebook page. Oh no, look at my 2011 Facebook page. It's like looking at a first edition of the Bible. It's ancient, ugly, and I don't understand any of it. And on this wall post, you have to put any genre of music and any inanimate object. And I will make a song for it and make a video for it for the next week. And it's gonna keep on going and on and going and on and on and on and on. Until episode three when I stopped it forever. So? Who wants to see episode one of this epic saga? Okay, well, you asked for it. Somebody asked me for episode one to do a country and western song about orange squash. There is no point for your embrace because you've got a crazy face. I can see orange squash with all your hair. My liver's polluted. Okay, so this is as good as you can imagine it is. Somebody wanted me to do a country and western music video about orange squash, and I can't sing and didn't have access to any professional recording equipment, so what did you think would happen? Not only that, but me and my friend Tim at the time recorded this at a farmyard in the middle of January, so even though it's sunny out there, it was like 1 degree C or about 34 Fahrenheit. See that pain on my face? That was real. I couldn't afford cowboy boots, so I just went around with no shoes or socks on. The good thing though is that after my feet caught frostbite, I got new robot feet! Oh great, more vlogging? I'm on a slant. Yep, you sure are. I just wish you'd slide uh, off of the camera. I'm on a slant. Oh man, I still have that phone. I tell you what, you kids got it lucky nowadays with your iPhones and your eye, your eye, your eye patches. We had to use these bricks back in the day. Do you guys remember texting with buttons? Do you remember slide phones? This one, this one slides both ways. <laughs> My favorite thing about the Country Orange Squash video, though, isn't anything to do with the video itself, but the files I used to make the video. I don't know why, but I kept every single recorded take during the recording of the song, and even the filmed vlog bits in case you want to hear a dog interrupt me. I look pretty damn f or watch me do a big mouth fart. <laughs> what are some of the recorded song takes though? Let's check out this one. I used to keep a close eye on my girl. Life was fun when she was around. There was no denying that our love was strong. Our bond was quite resound. Okay, I regret clicking on that one. So what's going on in this one? Yeah! Something that is a little bit cool, however, is that this is the first ever use of my version 2 intro that I would use for my first few Cadicurus game reviews. That's a neat little bit of history there. Like the Battle of Hastings. And speaking of countless amounts of people getting slaughtered, here's my second remix video. You know what? I don't mind this one too much either, and it took me so long to get right that you're gonna like it too, damn it. <laughs> 
Everything here is in time, the beat is pretty catchy, and it's the first time anybody heard my subscribe jingle that I ended up using for like seven years. <laughs> But you have to watch me vlog again before you can hear it. I can't apologise enough for the lack of a Randa song this week, but I figured that I had to do some sort of entertaining thing while you guys were just kind of waiting on that cliff ledge for me to do something and I didn't do it and I'm really, really sorry about that. Yes, I'm so sorry to the whole 12 of you that were watching my videos back then. I promise I won't keep you waiting again. And while you're waiting, can I interest you in some canned body perfume? I wanted to let everybody know that I smelled really good. Would you also like an egg? Because I've got one of them. I got egg. You know the craziest thing about this remix video though? If you go to my second channel where I re-uploaded all of these parts of the videos, not the vlogs because they're separate videos, this one is ahead of them all by over 300,000 views. Maybe the public have the problem, not me. This leads on to another episode of Randa's song. This time it was somebody asking me to do a nursery rhyme about an ostrich. Twinkle, twinkle. What exactly do you want me to say about this one? I'm dressed in a onesie, I'm wearing Crocs on my knees, I'm doing the oo voice, it's awful. And for the cherry on top of this dump cake, more vlogging! Anyway, that was the second Randa song and- At least I end it in the coolest way possible by flinging my hat against the camera and the hat staying there. Oh my god, no way I actually did that! That was the proudest moment of my life, so looking back, that means I had no life. Like this woman right here, singing about sitting on the toilet. Sitting on the toilet! Sitting on the toilet! You know what this needs? A triple speed dance club remix? With trumpets? You know what? For being a 17 year old that had no clue what he was doing, I think I surprisingly had a clue what I was doing here. Let's be real everyone, this shit slaps! I could listen to this all day. I think this is my favourite video by a long shot. <laughs> oh look, it's another vlog. <laughs> Sometimes I get silly sporadic speech impediments. Did I hate my audience back then? Well I think I must have done because the final episode of Randa Song goes out with a proper bang. Rapping about a bible. Now, all cringe aside, I think this is the best quality video I ever made as a young teen. Don't get me wrong, I still can't stand to watch this video and I still prefer the sitting on the toilet remix, but as far as like quality goes, yeah, this was definitely my peak back in the day. The camera work from Ollie is at its best, as is the camera quality. My effects aren't too awful and they're meaningfully placed, not like the Zelda pitch shifting video where I turn myself into a lampshade for most of it. The shots and the cuts that I spliced together were quite stylish, some of the visual gags I actually liked, and some of the rap lines I think aren't that bad either. The number of pages, 1,300. I went to the library, I roared, I thundered. How many books is that? Don't give me a trick. Then she looked up on her data and she answered 66. Good God! When I eventually did a vlogging video related to this one, I even tried rapping in that one. I'd like to take this opportunity to say a thank you. Without you beautiful people, I just don't know what that would do. Okay, that's enough of that. This then, very sadly, leads us on to the final video of the original Cat Icarus era. My swan song, my magnum opus, my requiem mass in D minor. How to pull birds. <laughs> Hello my duckies and welcome to how to pull birds. Cool. Yes, what you just saw there was the birth of you. And I still use that phrase occasionally today, just 10 times classier. Kyo. So tell me, young me, how does one pull a bird? Someone check stick musicians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as awful as this part of my video making career is, I have to admit I do really love that shot. That took us about half an hour to get as well. The timing with every type of bus and lorry that drove past and the speeds they were going and Ollie not having the camera ready, it was a nightmare. The premise of this video is very simple. I am trying to tell this girl at a bus stop how I feel about her. And by the way, that's Ollie's girlfriend's sister. Wouldn't that have been awkward? But for some reason, I can't talk. So instead, I whip out my phone, get the kazoo out of my pocket that I carry around everywhere because you never know when you need a kazoo and gear myself up for a song. Kill. 
And with that final cure, that was it for Old School Catechorus. I got around 157 subscribers after this, and then I gave game reviewing a shot, which all of a sudden took off, and I never looked back. All of this stuff, it was fun, it was a learning experience, but man, looking back, it was dreadful. If you're sitting at home right now, stuck in isolation, not sure what to do, trying to find some way to kill the time, and want to give this YouTube malarkey a shot, just remember this. I'm not the only example to take notes from. We're all bad when we start making videos. We are all terrible, especially if you go into this with no prior experience to most of the software or the internet or anything like I did. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But the important thing above anything else is that you have fun. And in these trying times we're all going through right now, we need to take all the little bits of fun we can get. Unless you've got plenty of prior experience of presenting, writing, video editing, how the YouTube game works, unless you've got any of that before going into this kind of thing, just remember that it takes a lot of time, effort, trial, error, and failure before you get into a groove with any style of video making. I mean, back then, I was so confused as to why nobody was watching or subscribing to me, because regardless of quality, I was grinding my soul into these videos while still at school, while I had multiple part-time jobs. So so to see the videos flop or fail is heartrending for a young person, especially when these videos could take you weeks upon weeks to complete. It makes you think that your work hours must reflect your success, but that's just not how it goes. And sometimes you can talk to channels with a million plus subscribers to this day and they will say the same thing, your work hours will not always reflect how well you do. In the beginning though, people will not go crazy for you and share you around because you're just not going to be that great. You're going to be rough around the edges, but embrace it, use it as an experience to keep Keep on improving and eventually you'll find something that makes you stick out and the more you can compare yourself to the past and say good god what was i thinking the better you are doing and hey if you start youtubing with the intent that it's going to become your career you've already failed i was really lucky i should not have gone in with that mindset at all i was kind of desperate looking back it's kind of sad if making your own independent content isn't a passion project first and foremost you'll never improve you'll just get depressed and frustrated if it works out then brilliant keep the ball rolling as long as you can keep improving on yourself keep an audience growing but if it doesn't work out you need to be in the mindset of it being no hard feelings you tried and you enjoyed the ride while it lasted I think you know what's coming up now. If you think you're a hot piece of chicken before even being put in the oven to cook, the rest of the world will see how raw you are and pick you up and throw you in the bin with the rest of the spoiled meat. Ooh, speaking of which, my dinner's ready. So while I'm chowing down on that, I'm gonna find the next thing to entertain myself with while I'm eating and, you know, while I'm stuck indoors. Um, what can I do now? Well, you know, I'll watch some game reviews that I haven't seen before. Yeah, I love a bit of a game review every now and then. Uh, what's going on with this guy? In Tomb Raider 3, create a storyline in which Lara gets breast cancer. Imagine the drama. Subscribe and hit that bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter because other- Oh, oh. Special thanks to my executive producers on my Patreon page in the description below. Matthew Hubble, TARDIS Type 40, Exopaz, Brandon Butler Williams, Ramen Wolf 1485, Red Eyed Critic, AD Thornton Smith, Mitchell Reed, Fart Rules, Skullman, Basil, Daniel and Alex, X Shadow Hunter ZX, The Game Shed, Slow Ponk, Stephen LeBlanc, and Calvin Koskella. Stan, wash those paws and stay indoors. Uh